And I used to think, we used to think in the ghettos that when you chop someone's ear, when you go to prison, even after you come back, you'll be the one who have won. <laughs> after 10, even ato kifungo miaka kumi. Ato kirudi nume shinda. So kwa zani kapiga mze mwingine hapo, juli kuwa na machungu. Commotion tu, nika mpiga stuli ya kichwa. Kapasuka kichwa. Uyako nipeleka mahali. The second guy ni mwenye walimpiga na mahali, nika mkata masikio. Waka nipeleka jela. Kena jela, I served there Romande for eight months. I came back. I realized, ata sina mahali pakulala, what should I do? Wacha nikata mwingine masikio. Ah, now prison became so comfortable than the problems outside. So I went there again. Uh, eight months, I came again. So ikabidi nikata mtu mwingine, nikaenda miaka tatu. That time I thought about my life and the life that now I'm living there. So I thought, nitaenda nikitoka hapa, nenda kujiua and finish this problem permanently. And forgiveness harbors bitterness. When you forgive, it's not forgetting, but you're releasing that toxic emotion away from you. So you heal by forgiving. My life started uh, with highs uh, since I had uh, a mother who cared, but I didn't know about my dad. But uh, later, later on, later he, she died, and uh, after she died, I was the only son, and uh, my grandmother, my grandmother, the extended family, who I thought to take care of me, they told me that I don't belong to them, it's my mom who belonged to them. So, and that's for the first time I faced rejection from the family members, especially my grandmother. And I, I, I knew I was in trouble that time, and I was at the age of 11 years. So I was left at Tamoja Pala Ivo Waganitu Ngwaru, Kawangware. And uh, that's when now I started experimenting with uh, drugs and substance abuse, but I didn't, I didn't, I, I didn't start by myself. I, I, I saw people and I admired their lifestyle. At that time, I didn't have something to enjoy because even eating was a big issue. So the house that I was living wasn't a good house at the same, at the same time. So I needed something to boost my that uh, excitement. So they told me when you smoke cigarette, uh, some things, you, you forget some things and it will stimulate your brain. Ah, nika joi naweza. So, first I didn't start with a cigarette. I started with the majani chai. So I rolled the tea leaves very well with a newspaper and then I smoked. Because we used to think, the, because our, some guys used to send, to send us to the shop to buy uh, cigarettes. We used to think that the, cig the something inside of the cigarette is the tea leaves the tobacco thing now inside the, the cigarette. So I, I, I thought that was the main thing in the, in the cigarette ingredient. So I could have done mine very well alone in the house. So that house I was living alone and there were people who were paying for my rent, at the same time paying for my school fees and also buying me food. Uh, that was a project from a church, a church program uh, from uh, Free Pentecostal Church of Kenya, they had a, a, a project here, uh, Compassion International, uh, the people who cared for the orphans, because I was total orphan, no no mother, no no one, and already I'm rejected by my grandmother. So at that time of uh, trying to experiment with the cigarette, I tried with the tea leaves, and then I thought that was not a good idea, since that it, it brought a lot of headache and uh, irritation, you know, uh, a lot of coughing, so I thought, ah, maybe, probably, I would rather now do what they are doing. So, moja kaniambi, anyo na kunga na ufala. So, shika fegi, ni kapati ufegi moja, nikuwa nito super much, and then I smoked. So, ni kavuta, haiku watamu, so, si kulamba mikono, venyo likuwa nasema, I would. <laughs> so, later on, uh, yu ni class 6, uh, later on, then, uh, nika, nika kuwa sasa class 7. So nimea, sasa nika, nika advance vizuri, sasa na vutafegi poa kabisa. Sasa class 7. Na pia class 7 pia, ilibidi sasa ni advance kwa another, nika graduate kwa another drug, uh, marijuana. 
so nikaanza kuvuta marijuana by the time ni maliza class 8 I was already an addict doing even alcohol so i was using three substances nilikuwa natumia fegi bangi and then nilikuwa nakunywa so i didn't know what to do uh, since still i didn't have someone to take care of me so i decided to go back to the church the organization and i requested them to just try help me support me go to a school and they told me we cannot pay the whole amount of your school fees we need your other 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 family to be able to help you pay the rest of the amount uh, they knew my story but they told me where they used to live now they my grandmother and since my grandmother told me that i don't belong to them it is my mom who belong to them i wasn't you know i, I didn't remember that so when i went there she reminded me you know i told you your mother was my daughter but you you don't belong to us i pleaded with them and i told them hey maze joni pelekeni shule so they decided to take me to a school but they dumped me there they took me to a school and they did a shopping of 21 shillings yani rangia viatu ya 7 bob and toothpaste that costed 14 shillings shopping yangu costed 21 shillings on that day so when i went there i didn't know i was being dumped so it was another form of rejection Uh, after some 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 weeks you know waiting for them to bring the stuff that they had told me they are, they promised they are coming with they didn't show up so I was alone in school there and then i be, began uh, stealing from now other students because they would have come with so many stuff more than me so i thought ah yeah 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 wacha mimi nifungue shop and i opened a shop in aito window shop in kwa shule mimi naiba vitu za watu afu mimi ndio naziuza tena na na duka yangu liko inaitwa window shopping so at that time I was also chased out of class since I had not paid the the amount that was required because had the church had paid uh, half of the amount my my, exam, my extended family didn't pay so I I was chased out of class uh, at the same time I was I was unable to uh, go and, and and you know take the food the uh, unable to eat <laughs> in the school uh, so and also I was unable to be allowed to sleep in in the school compound so i used to go eh kulikuwa na mtai inaitwa bondeni nakuru naenda huko and then i used to teach myself how to chase gambling simbi liko inaitwa simbi and then all the karate thing and then now here hapa na graduate on how to smoke marijuana and also how to be able to become a good broker and also a pickpocket already had had, had learned how to pickpocket when i was young at around when i was in class 7 because i used to go to marketplace because my neighbor where i used to live was a pickpocket and i i used to admire their life because now na wanakuja na pesa na wanavuta bangi vizuri sana so that life i really admired that because hiyo life inaweza so in school uh, after kufukuzwa nilienda bondeni hiyo bondeni nikajifunza kuvuta bangi vizuri na ku pickpocket because i admire still in my mind i recall that i wanted to become Uh, a person like uh, the the people i admired the people that i admired so i wanted to become like them so place ya kulala jioni kifika saa 4 naenda shule kuna watu wananifungulia na ingia sometimes nawapatia 10 bob mbao kenye niko nayo zile vitu nimeiba na wagawia hivyo tu so it, it reached a time where now the patron uh, the, the the administration now caught up on me na wakajua huyu jamaa analala huku hata kama akuli so wakanichuja shule kabisa so yuko wakakuwa na kaa gadi eh, like now i can't go there but uh, uh, on the side ya, ya shule tu uh, just a neighbor kulikuwa na a house that ilikuwa bado inatengenezwa uh, incomplete so nikapata na jamaa akaniambia alikuwa ananijua akaniambia no jinaje kuja nikupatie place ya kulala ah nikamwambia ni fitting so when we are living with that guy then akaniambia you need to do something si tu kukaa huku hivi nikamwambia mimi najua kufunga bangi ah kanambia ni poa tu uzie student tukatengeneza mabangi aje so now i became a peddler and now start, i started now uh, peddling uh, drugs in school uh, marijuana especially marijuana i later now now the cops uh, caught up on me nikajua siwezi kaa hiyo area so nikakuwa nakaa mbali na huko hivyo but naenda kulala huko jioni usiku kitu saa sita hivyo So the guy na kaniambia lazima utafute job nyingine. So mimi siku ajua ni nitafanya. Nikaenda bondeni. Ah nikaona huko kuna idea ya kubroke vitabu. 
wewe unaenda unauza vitabu tao na kuru so unapatiwa vitabu unaenda unauza unapatiwa vitabu you go sell and that's how now also vitabu zikaanza kupatikana watu wanashikwa wale wa kuuzio vitabu because it all the schools that all the books were being stolen ni mimi nilikuwa ga in charge ya kuziuza so walikuwa manigojia one day ni ende nipeleke vitabu nishikwe so but already nilikuwa already in charge signo isha pigwa sikuenda hiyo shule yani sikuenda hiyo siku so mimi nikarudi bondeni nikashindwa kwenye nitaenda hata kama nina so mbili na shindwa ni za nini kaingia place nikakula magedheri zangu nikakuwa napiga round huko hivyo ah uh, nikapatana na mtu a uh, sister ya my grandmother anaitwa nani sasa huyo <laughs> sister to my, my grandmother she's also a grandmother eh? so why akaniona mbali akaniambia eh hey, akaniita jina yangu you know and then i saw this place is familiar we used to come here with my mom when i was young that memory came up ringed up and i knew eh hey, this has to be someone ananijua vizuri sana so i went there and then she told me hey ulienda wapi how what happened we know your story eh nini nikamwambia hebu niambieni now she revealed what happened after my mother died and all the money that my mother had, my mom had left she told me now your grandmother who was your grandmother during your the burial of your of your mom we decided with the committee that uh, we, we are going to keep your money in a, in a, in, a, in a public trustee whatever so i didn't know what that meant so i told her why is the money no wait i was so angry with now i wanted to know what happened with my money so and uh, they told me no but what happened your, your grandmother came here no the sister came here uh, stripped naked removed all the clothes here and, and and you know in front of my husband in front of my kids and then, you know in their tradition tradition that is like i don't know a something uh, so it's a bad omen according to them so what happened they gave the documents that had be- belonged to my mom and all the details the banking and everything so she went she will do the money and now she was able to do whatever she was about to do with the money so me i was so like you know even bubbling i wanted to go there she told me go there and be careful because they can kill you so i decided to go there and in akuru now uh, mashamba so i went there uh, i went to my grandmother i found her there she gave me tea i was still angry with her offended so and i asked her where is my money which money Ah uh, ya mamangu akaniambia nilikuambia aje nilikula pesa ya mtoto wangu eh nikamwambia na mimi mtoto wake tukaanza kuvurugana sasa hapo eh watu wakakuja akasema twende na Kuru town so that to find money kidogo nikamwambia hata mlipagi shule nilifukuzwa mpaka shule akasema acha uongo we use sana naambia watu ndio ndio ikuwe tu yani ni mimi niko na vitu zangu afsa hizo wenyewe nilikuwa tu nimenyolewa design nyingine na kaa ruwi so mimi i couldn't be trusted Actually she was like the one speaking the truth. Ah, so we went to school. We went to school there. Ile shule ni shaf kuzwa. Nikwambia yenyewe nilifukuzwa kwa sababu amjai lipa. Mimi nashinda huko nikizurura. Ah, they said huyu uh, jamaa atakuagi shule. Mlimfukuzaga, yani alifukuzwa kwa sababu ya school fees. Now the time that tukirudi sasa as we were walking to what now going to the to the sister of my grandmother. As we were walking on the road because now he had gone to school now you are walking it wasn't far eh kufika kwa barabara uncle yangu was there now the brother to my mom wakanivunja wakaanza kunivuruga started beating me up eh kiondo kichwa mambishosho yangu eh chini ai makanga afu naitwa mwizi eh wacha nivunjo afu yenyewe nakaa na majuele sijai nyowa una just jenda shule so there was no one who is asking me uh, how you know the way i'm groomed it is not um, it, unakaa tu dhag So enyewe akayona ni mwizi nikaanza kupigwa. Uh, along that area kulikuwa na mama mzee anauza anauza sukuma. So akakimbia kwa ule shosho yangu nao kwenye nilikuwa naenda. Akasema ule mtoto anakujaga huku anauliwa pale. The two boys oh mama wakakuja mbio. Uh, like men they came there. And then when the, the makanga saw this men they, they were they were known there they ran. They left they, 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 they left and then wakatuacha mimi na shosho yangu. Eh hey, waje tu sasa tugeuke anko yangu tukapiga anko yangu na we removed one of his tooth and, and one of his eye 
Eh, so ilikuwa tough now the time we were taking him to police thought thinking, thinking that he and you on the wrong tukazima mishwa kujeni hapa <laughs> tukabeba nishwa huwa tumepiga mtu kaambia watada hapa ndio wakasema hapana ni mmepiga mtu but alikuwa anajuana nao so nikaekwa eh, bondeni police station huko tu nax kesho yake nikapeleka kwa industria ya huko <laughs> kotini kotini kasema bond 100000 ama eh, jela so and uh, so the time i they they told me we unaenda jela i was ready now to suffer now i knew hey, ah tu adipendi yani yule ni uncle yangu amesomesha na mama yangu and then yeye ndio anafanya hizi vitu zote and then me i went there to ask my fair share so why would they do this so the next morning after two days i, I was called and uh, there was someone already the husband to my sister's grandmother um waka they bailed me out uh 100,000 sure it was the same amount and we were out with the boys like the sons of my grandmother the, the second <laughs> i usually call them like that the second so we went back there and they told me about the story now they needed to know if i wanted to continue the school i told them yes so they needed to find another, a new school i went to a school called Afra High School the first one was being the name of the first one was Lake Nakuru Secondary School the second was Afra High School just near Afra Stadium so i went there but nikafanyishwa some exam i was about to graduate to, to, to go to the next class form 2 so they told me mimi come vizuri i did like a small exam and they told me go there so nikaingia form 2 na nikaanza kufanya vizuri sana no stress no nothing but still i was struggling with uh, marijuana na sigara bado i used to smoke the thing that i i, I didn't use ilikuwa tu pombe because i would, I would be seen staggering so lazima nicheze nicheze chini ya maji so form 3 i used to go to court uh, with uniform mention like nenda na mention afu narudi shule hivyo hivyo after form 3 i completed after form 3 the, the case was withdrawn and then uh, form 4 completed school Actually nimepatiwa masaspe ya zikai shule because ya mavegi bangi urui nikamaliza shule nikapiga mtu ngumi hapo kwa gate nikasema mimi ndio ule mse na ule 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 nani ule the grand the, the grandmother na yeye akaniambia kwa gari kuenda kabisa and sky road huko ah nikajua mimi na huyo wakanipatia 10000 na zikuenda kwanza nikaenda kwa kusavana rege nikaenda siju dimples Ah kesho yake nilikuwa na dhao mbili. Eh nilikuwa na zani ndavanya aje hizi pesa. Acha tu niende Nairobi. Kana Nairobi, Nairobi I need to have a place to live. So the people who knew me, who knew my mother and you alianza kuniweka. Especially there was a mother who used to uh, cook uh, uji and akaniambia ah umekuja uh, fanya kazi huku. Nikakuwa sasa mimi namsaidia kupika uji, kupasua kuni hizo vitu hapo. Kanifunza kupika mandazi na nikakuwa sasa na saa vizuri sana kwa hoteli. But pia nilikuwa napenda rege sana and nikaanza kunyonga watu pia tulikuwa na kijana wake tunanyonganga watu usiku mchana tunashinda tukikunywa changa so nilikuwaaga hivyo so time ikaenda hivyo tukinyonga watu tu tuko tunashikwa na rege mira pesa tu za kuharibu tu yani hakuna hakuna kitu kingine tulikuwa tunadu eh nilikuwa na kaka wao ase ikabidi walichuje wakanifukuza Nikoni nimeomba places mingi sana za kulala like so many people have supported me a place uh, to sleep like seven people when they their, their parents uh, realize that they they are walking with me they they they, they chase them plus me now so unatembea na mwizi hata wewe enda so mimi naambia unaona mimi ndio nafukuzo juu yako kwaenda so naenda kwa mwingine miezi tatu naenda kwa wengine hivyo ah nataka mwisho na jikajipata wapi ni sina nyumba naishi nje so place yenye nilikuwa nalala because i was always yani nilikuwa very rude very aggressive because i had this bitterness i didn't know where it came from so i could now like kupiga watu tu saa zote the time i was sleeping outside in my ka, ka place tuka kibanda kuna watu walikuja wawili wanataka kuniwa wakanipiga moyo kichwa and then they wanted they wanted to kill me yani nikufe na kupigwa tu na mawe smashing my head 
someone kitu ki, 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 saa sita ya usiku and during that time hakuna mtu anatembea hiyo time so kuna jamaa alitembea na hiyo time alikuwa anajulikana mtaa ni utero sana alikuwa anaita go ninja <laughs> akasema eh hey, nani wanapiga wase wakahepa eh hey, kanipata madamu yani so and that's how now mimi nilisaviewa hiyo time ya kuuawa hata kuna time nyingine bado wamenataka kuniua hao nimekatwa hapa hivi wali miss they wanted to cut my neck ika miss nikainamilia hivi so ika hata ikaguza huku chini so hapo ndio niliponea sasa so kwa wao wenye walinipiga hiyo time nikasema nita revenge and i used to think we used to think in the ghettos that when you chop someone here when you go to prison even after you come back you be the one who have won <laughs> after 10 even hata ukifungwa miaka 10 hata ukirudi nume shinda so kwanza nikapiga mzee mwingine hapo juu nilikuwa na machungu natafuta mzee mwingine anamwambia ah sio wametoka wapi wameenda wapi yani commotion tu nikampiga stool ya kichwa akapasuka kichwa huyo yako nipeleka mahali the second guy ni mwenye walimpiga na mai nikamkata masikio the family was able to like walikuwa na jiweza wakanipeleka jela tikana jela i served there romande for eight months i came back i realized hata sina mahali pa kulala what should i do wacha nikate mwingine masikio ah now prison became so comfortable than the problems outside so i went there again uh, eight months i came again i decided now size nitawiba i didn't have that courage ya kuiba that time because hata nilikuwa nimeisha so ikabidi nikate mtu mwingine nikaenda miaka tatu so jela romande nimekaa huko yani that time i thought about my life and the life that now i'm living there so i thought nitaenda nikitoka hapa naenda kujiua and finish this problem permanently so i went there na after kutoka jela nilikuwa tunatembea kwa barabara nikifikiria venye nitapata kamba nikapata mtu mzuri akanunua chakula nikamwambia nataka kakamba kidogo uh, wakanipatia that bob na nikanunua but iko ya kujinyonga nikamwambia nataka kufunga kitu tu vitu mattress ni ama kwa kanyumba kangu nikanipatia so under a tree and thought now when i was about to commit suicide nikafikiria hii na nikijinyonga nitaenda wapi <laughs> now i knew the method i was using i, I, I would i would, I would nini kutukelezea kwa 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 devo so for me i, I was afraid so stay kuna kwa shetani the second question was what about nikijinyonga would i feel pain okay now ikakuwa pain nishona watu wengi wamejinyonga sana and the the, the, the kind of like behind wana uko down wana download <laughs> yani wanajiaria eh hey, nikaona hiyo 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 ikaifiti so and then the third question was what if another person kills me would my sins be transferred to them and i thought you inaweza at that time there was a police uko kawangori alikuwa ni stupid these hitmen that were killing people so the guys the thieves eh eh magas walikuwa napigwa tu ridhe so i thought ah hiyo ni poa sana acha niende muite umbo mingi and then anipiga risasi so i went them nilikuwa najua time zao mahali wanapitaga six nikawaita umbo nyinyi ni weni gui so ilitedwa niwe wakanizunguka wakanivunja that time that time i did not die ai na juu siku kufa wameniacha hapo hivyo i had this desire to die so what happened there was a place among kulikuwa na gang plan hapo kulikuwa all kinds of sort of people kulikuwa na wizi wa bunduki kulikuwa na mapedi kulikuwa na nani nikajua hapo hivyo it's easy waki saa zile karao wanakam makarao wanakuja mkitoroka wanapiga risasi juu mkitoroka wewe mwenyewe anatoroka na pigo rive ha mimi nikajua nitaenda hapo i'll go there and when they come and wazichape juu au run and then when i run they will shoot me i die so my sins will be transferred to them because my problem was nirushie mtu ngori ya nini ya dhambi because i used to think now dhambi zangu zitamuendea mimi niende heaven ya end hell <laughs> so that's how i used to think so what happened ni ati wakakuja wakachapa taba mimi nikakimbia wako ni wako ni ua you know why they didn't kill me it's because The first time waliniambia wa, the first time niliwapata nikawatukana wakaniita wakanyuge 
<laughs> ah, huyu yule wakanyuge <laughs> because they couldn't think someone in his right mind can do that. Na anajua akipiga tu hivyo anampiga risasi. Ah, yule wakanyuge. Then I didn't die the second time I wanted to die. So I knew juzi takufa. Nikiwa mtaani three guys wakakushotiwa wakapigwa wakauawa. Waka, waka, waka Wanga walichapwa wali ama kushodhwa. So venye wali venye <laughs> Wenye <laughs> walipatikana watatu eh hey, nikaona place walikuwa naika bunduki yao tukaipata ah sasa at that time ilikuwa time ya Mpesa so during that time sasa Mpesa kuna watu wajui wizi hiyo eh hey, nikasema tutaenda kuchukua hapo and then tukaiba Mpesa mbili hiyo time nikitambo wase wasiniwekelee saa hizi <laughs> so <laughs> eh hey. so ikakuwa ikakuwa sasa hivi ndio hata si mingi ni tu zao tuwili tatu pesa tu so tunagawana kuna kitu but so tano ilikuwa do mob and then another three guys wakauawa nao ilikuwa ni gava ya kibaki haiweki waizi he mimi niko na venye wamepigwa risasi imetokea hapa ime, hapo imetokea kishimo na huku mimi i said i don't want my life to be like sitai kukufa hivi that time i feared death so i decided to lie low we sold the gun and then the money I drank everything that I was given and the next day I had even no I had no one shoe because I had slept outside. So I thought now afadhali let me now start gambling and ikaanza kucheza karata. So karata ni kulai low. But hata karata ikuwa, ilikuwa tu nje nyingine tu ya kukutana na wakora nyingine. I joined Mungeke. Huko leo Mungeke nao wakaanza tena kuuawa huko. Ah nikahepa. Sasa na shindo niaje. So that time hata kuna msaimu amempiga sana because mungeke wamenipiga because they I, 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 nilikunywa nilikunywa pombe alafu nikatumia tiruara for them katumbako kalikuwa holy thing. So mimi I was defiling the holy thing. And then hata niliacha mnisha anga wao muonge chivyo. So after selling the bunduki sasa sina namna I wanted now to drink nikunywa pombe kabisa and then I blame pombe for killing me. So nikaanza kuchotea wa mama wa nini maji wa changa maji and then they used to pay me with changa pack up jerican unalipo instead ya kulipo 20 bob unapatiwa changa my life we can iterate i went back yani ungeniangalia my sura my face would have acted horror movie without makeups like unione na utoke mbio ama wote usiku so and that is how i was I didn't have a place even kuka I was being given a house by mama changa ni lalage huko na unajua naishi naishi kwa nyumba ya mchanga kukinyesha kuna nyesha tu uko ndani so ukiamka nikao umetoka huko kutengeneza nyumba ya matope because umejaa matope <laughs> asubuhi so nikiamka asubuhi sina maji ya kuoga naenda kwa manyasi najipanguza na nachukua the dew and then I use the dew to wash my my face like now to remove whatever was evil now pia mali nilikuwa nalala yani at that time nilikuwa watu walikuwa na nilukaga hiyo time nilikuwa na chawa nilikuwa mchafu vietu zangu zilikuwa zinanuka kama nimevaa yani nakumbuka siku moja tumeenda ka movie tutu video tu mtaani na nimeka hapo nyuma nasikia mtu huko mbele anauliza eh hey, nani wewe umetoa viatu eh hey, nikahepa juu wanaweza niosha <laughs> Niko naenda kwa uwanja peke yangu natoa viatu na naoga nikiwa nikiwa peke yangu mahali hakuna watu juu ya rufu harufu ni noma because i used to you know carry water at the same time i'm sleeping with viatu because i'm sleeping outside for all that time hata ni 3 months unakaa tu na viatu mpaka ukitoa viatu yani migu iko white white kabisa so kuna mtu aliweza kuniambia naweza fanya job na ya mjengo eh, construction site so i decided to also to decide that i went there for six months i uh, had stopped drinking but later relapsed started doing drinking again and then i was chased out of that construction site that job although i had bought a mattress and a bed so i went back to kawangware that was in kiambu the place where i was working i had bought a mattress and a, and a, and, a, and a bed i went to kiambu i went to kawangware back to kawangware i rented a house ambao ilikuwa inatoka I used to pay with installment nilikuwa I had I, I, I was paying uh, I was paying it for four, I was paying it 400 shillings and 400 but I'm um, I'm paying 
uh, with installment like nikiwa na uh, 30 bob na patia landlord 15 bob nikiwa na 40 na mpatia kila siku lazima ulipe then that house was an inje ndani uh, meaning like when uh, it's outside uh, outside in uh, in outside <laughs> outside in <laughs> because it is raining inside still kuna nyesha ndani and then inje so kuna nyesha so kutoka inje kuna nyesha uko ndani pia kwa nyumba but uko inje and that house hiyo area ilikuwa inaitwa Dasaka Wangware kulikuwa kila mtu ni mbaya yani mpaka landlord was a thief ukinunua mtuungi anakuibia eh mtu nyumba yangu ilikuwa nikao kitoka asubuhi unatoka mbio <laughs> utaikuonekana kwenye umetoka <laughs> so and uh, during that time there was this bodyguard of president of uh, Sudan Garang they had uh, some 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 guys they had stolen the 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 seska of the bodyguard so the police were on us that time ke helicopter kikasimama hapo kingine go zimama hapo ma police wametuzunguka kila mahali wanakuja wanagonga kamlango pap tokeni sasa si kutoka migu uende ume you, 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 like crawling mpaka pale you sleep you will lie on your on your on your belly so and then wakati wakele mbunuki kwa kichwa na wanauliza aje tu au tu amalizie ama kwaza osiasa aka call no 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 usiwa uwe kwanza fanyeni hivi bring them here we interrogate them and that's what happened I, i survived again so they took us to police station mudangari police station they put us on parade where everyone who was being robbed that time came and no one who was found to be there among the, the robbers so we survived again but the two guys were, were, were found again and they were killed kwa nyumba yao wakapigwa risasi mali walikuwa na kaki la mtu alihama so mimi sasa sikujua kwenye nita change what i'm gonna do my life was just there waiting to die actually nikirudi kwa wako kanyumba i was saying nyenyewe sijakufa i used to call that kanyumba mocha because one day i will die here and then that nyumba was a pit latrine that was covered by stones so ni pit latrine ya kitambo and then wakaweka mamawe and then kuna nyesha kila mahali yani maji inaingia kila mahali at least nyumba yangu ilikuwa poa the water used to go down there the other people used to inakuna baki huko wanapotea kukinyesha kwanza mnahama wiki au kurudi mnarudi lazima mkuje na pesa ya landlord hago <laughs> na tuka and then there was so many other women wanatupatia kazi ya kunyanganya watu huko wanaenda wanawadanganya kwa mabaa wanawaleta ati kwa nyumba and then sisi ndio tunapatikana huko and then we steal from those people so my life was actually ilikuwa ni, ni kama naishi a mistake then there was this program that came in in Aito Maisha Poa Center a full gospel uh, street program they came up and they started talking to us they started talking to us telling us about god and all the stuff and they start giving us some uh, income generating activities we do we used to make uh, necklaces and bracelets all those and uh, uh, even during that time i was just in that program because no one who would think that this guy would have changed everyone used to deny that mimi neza badilika they have tried all their level best and me through all my life kumbe i was being strengthened and you know being hardened to become a hard guy yani sioni kitu kubwa kwa life yangu so after the pastors who who said i cannot change they chased me away there was a missionary who started that organization is the one i used to talk to on the road kila time nimesimama mahali akipita na muongelesha so used to time time yake afadhali nikae hapa kama ni 5 hours but nimuone tu so na muongelesha na akasema one day i will help you u change life yako but hao watu wamekataa au ma pastor so ndio tu akakam na idea anipeleke a program the christian discipleship program faith based akanipeleka place na ito teen challenge of kenya sio nilikuwa na rasta nikazinyoa nikakula nyama by the time by the way hiyo siku nilikuwa nimesema nita kunywa nivute bangi kesha yake sitaweza kuamka so mimi sitaenda rehab so siku hiyo the next day na nilikuwa nimevuta bangi na kunywa wangu yote ah nikaamka poa bila hangover because you know what is happening so that energy ikatuma niende place yenye nilikuwa tuna meet so they came they picked me kana nimeoga nimenyoa rasta and then i went to the teen challenge program in in in, in kiambu road kwenda hapo hivyo after three days nasikia kwa three days unasema there is god in the morning jesus in the afternoon holy spirit at night nikasema kuendeni huko kuendeni mimi nitaikusikia kuhusu hiyo story because you people are representing jesus 
yani batamkai kama Jesus because i used to hate pastors i used to hate churches because of how they treated you know compassion international belongs to a church and i know how those people treated me now there are other ones full gospel of kenya the pastors nimejua venye wameni treat how would i even fall in love with such people ambao they have they don't know my pain so i was so, so angry with those jesus of theirs there because i knew jesus was good guy according to what we have been taught but them they don't represent jesus i really hate even to represent jesus that way that's why even i'm a pastor dressed like this i don't know you are not pastor so i was there for after three months every every step nilifanya hiyo team challenge walikuwa wanasema uh, the, the the program ina kuongelesha the material spoke to me that there was a god who loved me and that's how i fell in love with the god of the program that i was in at that time and the people didn't treat me like there were other ones so i knew this was a, a good place to be and then i started now growing in the word reading like church every 365 days ni kwenda kanisa it's like you know you have to go seven years wewe <laughs> wewe unaenda every sunday you have to go seven years so that ukue kiwango yangu it's like god was revenging every day i didn't go to church and that was my turning point a teen challenge of kenya that was in 2010 the program is one year i went there for one year it was a process i didn't just change there was a lot to be you know not to be admired but after i i i i i, I finished the, that program uh, i was actually free i knew i was free i went to my grandmother i went to the people who had rejected me and i went there i told them that i, for, I had forgiven them since i got saved in that program i knew how jesus had forgiven me and i needed to forgive other people so this was a release of past toxic emotions that i had and that really uh, harbored bitterness in my heart and uh, during that time now i was free i was able to move freely without you know even recognizing the, as my as my recognizing those people as my uh, as my family because i had no that intact relationship with them and after that i had the desire to go to bible school i was being sponsored to go to east africa school of theology i went there for three years uh since i didn't have a place to go during holidays i used to live there for three years mini koshule in and out and that's how i developed uh that calling of wanting to talk to my former gang the ones who are alive during that time so i went back to kawangware start speaking to people and then i found that the girls that i knew who are so intelligent and and good looking and already they have gone to prostitution i didn't know why so and the guys have become wakora So what is happening up Ivy? So I knew they had gone to a hard drug and boy na ito heroin. And now I needed them. I used to walk with a kabag uh, with my old photos so that they can see me. And is that during that time they came a person who wanted to support me from what I was doing and uh, I shared the story of those people na tukaanza kuwapeleka hiyo program ya teen challenge. Akasema ata sponsor every each one of them when you make that choice. So for the first time I took 20 people. And during that nikaandiko after Bible school I graduated in Bible school. After graduating in Bible school I was also employed in that in that program Teen Challenge. And now our art when you naenda kuongelesha na wapeleka kwa hiyo program. So that's how now I started now reaching out to gangsters, prostitutes and uh, hardcore drug users and the vulnerable ones. Now I've done that the whole of Nairobi ata Mombasa nimefanya kadha and, and on, out of my story I had this desire to help other people and uh, where I knew every life matter no matter who you are no matter what you have gone through regardless of your age of anything uh, there is good in you and after you transform people can't say that you are the guy who used to be the the old one because and you have to commit yourself to God and that's how I started the, those an, an NGO called Reclaimer Street Foundation whereby we take in uh, uh, the girls from prostitution who are actually in gangsterism and who are in uh, you know in hard drugs and who are very poor and unable to to to, to take themselves in rehabs i'm also a licensed pastor with Kenya Assemblies of God they have given me a license I even my license niko na kofia kwa picha i don't look like a pastor i still have a license of that organization and um, i run programs in church 
uh, KEG Mirema Drive. We have, uh, we have programs for drug addicts. Uh, on Tuesday, we have the campus guys. Uh, the kids, those cool kids, all spoiled kids, they don't want to go to rehab, but they are still using maybe one or two substances, maybe marijuana or sometimes uh, alcohol. And we have like 10 of them. Uh, their mothers bring them in uh, to me and now we share we share with them it's like an outpatient program and then we still have on wednesday every wednesday we have girls from brothels from from, from prostitution especially the young ones from dandora from town and uh, from zimmerman who do want also to change their lives but it has been a long journey for them to to like to to what kukubali <laughs> kukubali kukuja Kuja, where we are, we are in church, it's after reaching them uh, oftenly. And every Thursday we have the guys that uh, brew changa in, um, in Madare, and the one who drink, so the ones that are rejects, the ostracized one, and we have a program for them every Thursday. All the programs, we call them Turning Point. We have Turning Point Tuesday, Turning Point Wednesday, Turning Point Thursday. And also we have Turning Point Saturday, where we have the street kids who use cheap uh, substance. Uh, they usually come from Gedurai 45. And every Sunday, I'm a pastor to drug addicts and all the people. We have a main church for the people who are not addicts, for the members. And then we have the, the church where I am a lead pastor for drug addicts. And the people who use substance and i usually go to schools and also go to youth conferences and if you have like uh, clothes baby clothes women clothes men isozote you can drop them at merima drive uh, kag new beginnings merima drive we have a church there we also have a program for the ladies inside the church it's a uh, uh, inside uh, uh, our see it's an inpatient program and also if anything uki ukuwa na chakula any food stuff prayer you can say a prayer for us and uh, like now we are planning for valentine's day we call it dignity bash we usually take flowers cakes chocolates to the girls in the brothers that's how we win them we call it love ministry and if you wish to be part of that, you can uh, uh, join me. Uh, you, you can holler me and then we can uh, discuss more on that. Uh, we have a motto where we usually say, every life matters. Because even me, I was rescued. So that's why I rescue others. I have this desire for others and it is the passion that drives me to see others uh, being saved from the things that destroy them. And I know the potential that they have. For me, I, I didn't even know anything. I was in the street. I didn't know that one day I would make it in life. So I would want people to live to their potential. I would want people to, to discover their, their purpose, why they were born. And we actually tell them there is no um, problem that has no solution. So I usually go there with a solution. And, and God is number one solution for these people. Although I'll have to do my part to be able to help them realize that they have something that they can offer uh, in their generation before they die. Bitterness is, a, is an emotional, um, you know, it's an emotional problem. So if you don't deal with it yourself, you always be in pain. So bitterness first is to accept what happened. If you don't accept what happened, then you always live in that, uh, you'll be living with that past. Another thing is forgiveness. And forgiveness harbors bitterness. When you forgive, it's not forgetting, but you're releasing that toxic emotion away from you. So you heal by forgiving. And that's why Jesus told us to forgive each other. He knew. Sometimes we'll have a bitterness. He's also told, he told us to love our enemies. <laughs> Why? Instead of bitterness. And he told us, he told us uh, in Ephesians, is it Ephesians? Yeah. When you're angry, do not let the sun go down when you're angry. He knew some ways to not have a bitterness. And, and bitterness is not what, actually so many people I found in prison, 
it is because of anger issue, something that had happened in their lives. And then they did something that uh, was against the law. They found themselves in prison. So they were paying the consequences of, 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 their, of their bitterness. So bitterness does, does not have to take you there. You can accept that things happened, you can change what happened, and you can be able to forgive what happened, although you cannot forget. Yeah, you forgive, and sometimes you can forget. And that's why I like the principles of the Bible, where you are supposed to forgive eh, 70 times 70. That is forever. Because you find so many people who offend you, you find so many people, you know, uh, making you uh, angry. Uh, but you cannot do anything else apart from knowing uh, that principle. And it will help you overcome bitterness and you will be free in your life.